She's taking a perspective from a parent of a graduate to a per- the perspective of an everyday believer. You got any believers in the house? Yeah. Amen, amen. That's where every hand lifted. I'm going to ask again. Any believers in the house? There it is. There it is. Um, an everyday believer. Now, I can stand up here and I can, I can tell you all the things that you already know. I can stand up here and point out the obvious and send you home. I can tell you, hey, we're going to go through tough times. There's going to be times where you want to give up and give in. There's going to be times where you want to throw in the towel and call it quits. And I can tell you both, but continue to be the light. Continue to stay strong and send you home. But God sent me today, God sent me here today to give you a word of encouragement, to give you a word of hope. He didn't send me to just tell you what you already know and what you're already going through. He sent me today to give you a word of hope, to give you a light, a light at the end of the tunnel, and to introduce you to that light who is at the end of the tunnel. Amen. Are you with me? So God wants me to come today to bring a word of encouragement. Today's message is going to be an encouraging word. Right, we're closing the series of speed, this message series titled Speed, and today we're closing that series. So what I want to do is I want to leave on a high note. I want to encourage you and empower you and to remind you that there is a hope out there. I want to let you guys know that Jesus is still Lord. God is still on his throne. So today's message is based on that, 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 that principle and that idea of, hey, things are going to get tough, but dig in, dig deep. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't throw in the towel. Don't call it quits. I'm not just talking to the parents of graduates. I'm talking to every one of us because we go through seasons. We go through things. We go through circumstances, and we go through situations that's going to want us, that's going to cause us to want to give in and to give up. But hold tight, New Hope. Amen? Amen. Are you still with me? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God gave me a, uh, told me to give a word of, of encouragement, and I thought to myself, well, what better word of encouragement than the word of God itself? What better word of encouragement than the word of God itself? And it's found at the top of your notes in our opening scripture in Galatians 6, 9. And it says this. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season, I want you to underline that, due season. We shall reap if we do not lose heart. Woo. You see, I love that God doesn't just point out the obvious, tell us what we already know and send us home. No, God gives us a word of encouragement. God gives a word of hope. He shows us the light at the end of the tunnel. He says, let us not grow weary in doing good. Right, we're called to do good. We're called to be the light. There's going to be times where I'm not going to feel like being the light. There's going to be times where I'm not going to feel like doing the right thing. There's going to be times where I'm going to be so beat down and beat up, I'm not going to want to do what's righteous. There's going to be times where I'm going to say, God, can I just take the matters into my own hands? As a matter of fact, can I take him into my own hands? Right, there's going to be those moments in life where we're going to say, God, I, I, can't, I don't want to do what's right anymore. There's going to be those times. But I'm here to tell you that there's hope. God, God is saying, let us not grow weary. You see, it's okay to grow weary, but it's not okay to stay weary. You see, because God says, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You see, it's okay to get weary. We're going to get tired. We're going to go through seasons where it's going to be tough. But it's not okay to stay weary and stay down and to give up and to give in and to call it quits on your children, to give up on your marriage, to give up on your job, to give up on your boss. God is saying, don't, don't, don't grow weary in doing what's good. We need to continue to do what is good, continue to do what is righteous in God's eyes. And in due season, that is the hope, that is the promise that God gives us. In due season, meaning it's going to happen. It's bound to happen. In due season, I don't know if you guys are listening to me. In due season, it's bound to happen. You shall reap. Don't lose heart. Amen? So God wants to encourage us today on not giving up. And so God is teaching us that in order for us to accelerate, we need to go further and faster. So the title of today's message is Further and Faster. I know it's, it's, it's kind of a, 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 a title that's like, huh, what, what do you mean by further and faster? And I sat before the Lord. And this is what he taught me. He says, God wants to accelerate us to a new season. Maybe you're going through some tough times. Maybe you feel like throwing in the towel. You, th- you feel like giving up and giving in. You want to call it quit. But God is saying, look, 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 hold tight, hang tight, continue to do what is good. And I want to accelerate you. You're going to reap something. I want to accelerate you to a new season, to a new blessing, to a new level. In order to do that, he has to take us further and faster. Now, when I think of the word further, the first thing that comes to mind is endurance. Is endurance. You see, for example, if you take someone who runs a mile every day, 
They run a mile every day. And then a coach comes and he says, hey, I want you to run a marathon. You see, in order to get from the mile a day to the marathon type of capability, there's going to be a process of endurance training. There's going to be a process of strengthening your endurance, strengthening your stamina. There's going to be a process of that. And that's what God wants to talk to us about today. By going further, he wants to take us further, but in order to go further, he needs to strengthen our endurance. He's not going to give us something that we can't handle. He's not going to come to somebody who's never ran a lap in their life and say, go run a marathon. God is saying, I'm going to train you. I'm going to put you through some things. How many of you know that training's never easy? Training's never easy, right? For those of you who are in fitness, you know that the harder you train, the stronger you get. Right? So God's going to put us through some training, put us through some things that's not going to be comfortable. That's not going to be easy. But it's those things that's going to strengthen our endurance so that he can accelerate us further and faster. Amen? Amen? Ooh, I feel it's going to be a good word today. I feel it's going to be a good word today. So I sat before the Lord. I said, okay, God, uh, uh, um, well, how can we go further and faster? How, how can we learn about endurance, and how does this help us in our walk? And he gave me three bullet points that I'm going to share with you today. Now, I'm going to remind you that today is an encouraging message. It's not a lot of how-tos, but it's more of an encouraging reminder, lifting up of hope, to remind us of who our Christ is and who our hope is, right, so we can hold on to his promises. Amen. Amen. So, so number one, I thought I, I, God gave me this, this message. Number one, uh, things don't happen to you. They happen for you. Things don't happen to you. They happen for you. Hmm. Now, maybe you're in that season. Maybe you're in a season of questioning God. Maybe you're in a season of, man, God, I've been doing the good. I've been doing what's righteous. I've been going to church. I've been going to Bible study. I, I've been reading my word. I've been doing my daily devotions. God, I've been tithing. I even signed up for ministry. I'm serving now. Maybe you're in a season of you're doing the right thing, but you're not seeing the blessing yet. And you're feeling weary. You're feeling like, God, I'm, I'm tired. I don't see, I don't see the progress. I don't see, I don't see the blessing. I don't see the, 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 the uh, multiplication. And you're questioning, God, God, what's going on? Maybe you're in a season of you're taking two steps forward just to get knocked three steps back. And you're like, God, I've been, I've been going to church. I've been learning. Why is this happening to me? God is strengthening your endurance. God is strengthening your endurance. And I ask God the same question. And this is the, this is the uh, scripture that he gave me, the answer itself from Jesus. In John 13, 7, it says this. Jesus replied, you don't understand now what I am doing, but someday you will. You don't understand what I'm doing right now in your life. That situation, that circumstance that just happened to come up and pop up in your life, that's not by accident. There is a training process that's happening in your life. God is saying that you're going through something. You won't understand it now, but someday you'll look back and you'll have your ah moment. You know what moment I'm talking about when you look back at the trials and you say, ah, that's why he put me through that. Right, when we get to the victory side of the blessing and we look back at the hurt, the pain, the struggles, and we say, ah, I get it, God. I understand why you put me through that. You put me through that so I can get through this. The situation that I'm going through now, you strengthen me there so that I'll be strong enough to walk here. You see, things never happen to us. They happen for us. And here's a little quick how-to renewing of your mind. Renewing of your mind. Maybe join a life group. Get people to encourage you, to remind you of who Christ is. Because many times we'll look at situations and say, God, why me? I've been doing good. I've been going to church. Why me, God? Why does, we, remember, you, you hear people say, why does bad things happen to good people? And we question God. And God is saying, look, look, you don't understand what I'm doing right now in your life. But someday you're going to look back and you're going to go, ah, I get it, God. I know why. I see why you put me through that, so that I'm stronger here today going through this situation, knowing that I have a hope that if I conquer that giant, what makes any other Goliath different in my life? Yeah. It's those moments, it's those, that, those teachings and those lessons that we take from God. It's those ah moments. So God is strengthening your endurance, and the best way to strengthen your endurance is through trials and problems. Through trials and problems. See, many of us will pray and ask God to remove the problems in our lives. 
but not ask him, why, what are you trying to teach me through this trial? Right? Many times when we go through stuff or we go through situations, we say, God, the cross is too heavy. Take it from me. But God is saying, no, 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 no. I'm not going to remove the cross. I'm going to strengthen your back to carry that cross. I'm not going to remove the burden. I'm going to strengthen your back to carry that cross. Jesus said, if you want to follow me, pick up your cross and follow me. We have a cross that we're to carry. We say, God, I've got too much on my plate. God says, I'm the God of plates. Let me expand your plate. God is saying, I'm not going to remove the, the, the cross. I'm not going to remove just because it's heavy. No, I'm going to strengthen your back. Why? Because there's other battles ahead that you're going to encounter. And if I baby you now, you're going to fail there. So God is saying, let me strengthen you. So when we go through trials, don't think, man, this is happening to me. No, this is happening for me. Whatever it is, God, I know that you're strengthening me for another battle that's coming. I know you're strengthening me for something that's coming this way. I know, God, that I can hold on to you and I can cling on to you. You are my refuge of strength. And, Father, I can hold on to your promises. Renewing of your mind and, and claiming that and saying, look, none of this stuff is happening to me, devil. It's happening for me. God is getting me ready for an ultimate blessing, an ultimate battle that I know I'm going to conquer because the enemy knows where he belongs. Right? Never think that things happen to you. They happen for you. Amen. Now, in book of Romans 5, 3, and 4, problems and trials benefit us three ways. And Apostle Paul teaches us in your scriptures, it says this. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us to develop endurance. Underline endurance. And endurance develops strength of character. I want you to underline character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. I want you to circle salvation because that's who it's all about. See, God, when we go through trials and we go through problems, anytime we pray for God to remove the problems, but God is saying, no, 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 no. This is something that I'm training. I'm strengthening your back to carry this cross. When we go through trials and tribulations and we go through trials and, and problems, they benefit us three ways. It strengthens our endurance in order for God to take us further and faster. It says it right in the scripture that it strengthens our endurance and then it strengthens our character. Character is defined, character is defined as, as a mental or moral quality distinctive to an individual. So when I go through trials and I go through problems, the enemy is going to speak and come against me. The adversary is going to say things about me. But because I, God is strengthening my character and strengthening my identity, I can tell the devil who he is and who I am. Devil, you can't tell me who I am because I know who I am in Christ. God tells me that I am a child, that I am an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of my testimony, that my God has delivered me. I know who I am. So the more trials and problems that we go through, the more God is strengthening us to remember who we are. Because many times we go through problems, we forget who we are. We go through trials. We go through problems. We go through tribulations. And we forget that we're followers of Christ. But God is saying, no, no, no. When you go through those things, it's for me to strengthen so you remember who you are. So when the enemy tries to tell you, hey, Austin, you're this. No, I'm not. I know who I am. You know where you're going to end up. You know where you're going. The book of Revelation says you're going to be casted into the pits of hell, buddy. Right? So it's renewing your mind. When you get into the word and you're renewing your mind, you can tell the devil who you, who you are. And it strengthens our confident hope in our salvation. A salvation is the protection from harm, of loss, and hurt. You see, when we go through trials and tribulations, it strengthens our hope. It strengthens our confidence in our hope. Where now, now, now I go through stuff and I'm saying, okay, this is not happening to me, but happening for me. Who do I run to? I run to you, Jesus. I lift my eyes up to the mountains. Where does my help come from? It comes from you. It doesn't come from the mountains. It comes from you, Lord. So it strengthens my confidence and my hope in my salvation. That if I trust in God, I know that I'm protected from hurt, from loss, and from, from harm. So that's what the trials and tribulations does for us. It benefits us. So never pray, God, take, take away this problem from me. No, say, God, strengthen my back so I can carry this cross. I know that it's happening for me and not to me. Because your word declares that you are for me. And if you are for me, then who dare be against? Hallelujah. Woo. So new hope. Don't let things, don't, don't think that things happen to you, but they happen for you. Number two, 
Keep your focus on the promise, not the progress. Keep your focus on the promise and not the progress. Why is it important to keep your focus on the promise and not your focus on the progress? Uh, Because there's discouragement, there's fear, there's doubt. And you start to allow these things to seep into your heart. I talked to a guy who's a a personal trainer, and he was talking to to me about um, weight training and weight loss. And he said one of the main things, one of the main uh, things that people do wrong uh, when when they're trying to lose weight is they weigh themselves every day. And I said, well, why is that? You know, we have to know where we're at. Uh, he said, no, no, because when you, say, when you see that the, the pounds aren't shedding, you tend to get discouraged and you give up on yourself. You tend to get discouraged and you say, you know what, I don't see progress. I don't see me making a difference. There's no difference in my body. There's no difference in the number on the scale. So people tend to give up in the first, second week. And I believe that that's the same thing in the spiritual. It's the same thing with us as believers. When we focus too much on the progress and not the promise itself, we tend to get discouraged. We tend to get, we, lose, we get doubtful. We start to doubt ourselves, doubt God's capabilities in our lives, knowing that he created the heavens and the earth, but yet we want to doubt him in this little situation of my finance. God is saying, no, 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 no. Trust me. Trust me. Keep your focus on the promise and not the progress. Because many times when we get discouraged and we feel doubtful and fear, we lose heart. And the opening scripture says, let us not grow weary in doing good, for in due season we will reap if we don't lose heart. Because we can do good and not have the heart. We could just go through the motions. But God is saying, don't lose heart. Do good out of the goodness of your heart. In due season, that's the hope. In due season, God is saying, it's going to happen. Hang in there. Keep your focus on me. Now, I learned a thing about uh, Chinese bamboo. Right? Random. You ever had those nights where you're just on YouTube watching one video and you end up watching uh, bamboo, um, the, the making of bamboo? Um, uh, I learned a thing on bamboo, uh, Chinese bamboo. Um, when you plant Chinese bamboo, uh, for the first four to five years, there's nothing on the surface. There's no sign of sprout. There's no sign of anything on the surface. Uh, you can fertilize it. You can water it. You can, you can adjust it to the right sunlight. You can care for it, nurture it, you can sing to it, do whatever, whatever you want to it. But, but for the four, four to five years, you won't see a thing. Many times we get discouraged like that in life. I, I've been going to church for four, four years, God. I, I, I still haven't seen uh, progress. I, I still haven't seen a, a, a movement of the Spirit in my life. God, I've been, I've been journaling and I, I've, I've been worshiping and I've been, I've been serving you, Father, for, for so long. But I don't see anything. We tend to get discouraged. But this is what I've also learned about the Chinese bamboo is that during those four to five years, what's happening is the massive root system that's growing in the soil. The massive root system that's growing to where when the bamboo grows, nothing, no wind, no enemy, nothing the enemy can throw your way will knock it down. We don't understand that when going through those, those seasons of God, I don't see nothing happening. He's just growing roots in your life. He's just growing roots in your life to when the enemy throws things your way, you're not knocked down easily. You can tell the enemy and stand in his face and say, I know who I am in Christ. You can't tell me otherwise. It's growing roots in your life. But here's the cool thing. At about the fifth year, it says that the bamboo can shoot out and sprout at about 80 feet in a one year's length. So from the fifth to the sixth year, it can grow 80 feet in the air. And it'll grow rapidly accelerating to a new level, accelerating to a new blessing. For the first four years, you didn't see nothing, no sign of life anywhere, no sign of blessings anywhere. I'm here to encourage you, don't give up. Don't give up. You've been doing good. You've been doing what's righteous. You've been doing what God has called you to do. Maybe you haven't seen the move of God in your life yet, but don't give up. Your blessing is right around the corner. Your blessing is right around the corner. Believe me, God wants me to encourage you today. Don't give up. Keep your focus on the promise. Amen. Now, many times uh, when we think of the promise, we think of the promise of something that I'd gain. But maybe the promise is something that I've already been given. 
Maybe we're looking for a promise that we gain, but it's already a promise that has been given to us. Many of us are looking for something in God's hands, but not looking for what's God's heart. God is saying, focus on the promise. Don't worry. You seek first the kingdom of God and all else will follow. Now, let's go into scripture. Scripture always help all this blabbering I do on stage. Um, so scriptures, Philippians 3, 13, 14, it says this. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it. But I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Hmm. When we focus on the progress, what we're doing is we're focusing on the surroundings in our lives and our past. When God is saying, no, 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 just, just seek me, just, just, just seek me. And all else will follow. It's not focusing on the progress. So many times we, we, we focus on what's going on around us and that discourages us. You see, it's not the water that surrounds the ship that sinks it. It's the water that gets in the ship that sinks it. So many times, many times when you go through life and you go through stuff, you think, man, uh, uh, this isn't happening. Uh, th th this is falling apart. Um, there's lack in this area. God is saying, no, no, don't focus on these things. Focus on the promise. The promise isn't necessarily something that you'd gain, but something that's already been given. You see, Jesus is my joy. Jesus is my refuge. Jesus is my forgiveness. Jesus is my healing. So wherever you're at in life, see, I don't know what season you're at in your life right now. But I know this, the promise, Jesus, he's everything we'll ever need. He's everything we'll ever need. As long as you keep your focus on Jesus, you keep your focus on the promise, the promise, baby, that was given to us in that manger, the promise of Jesus Christ, you keep your focus on him, everything else will be okay. When you start focusing on what's behind you, your past, and what's around you, that's when discouragement and you lose heart in doing what is righteous and what is good. Stop focusing on what's going on. Amen. Amen. In the book of Acts, it reminds me of the story of Peter. Uh, Peter was thrown in jail. Peter was thrown in jail, and, and he said the angel came and visited Peter in the jail. And I love that. Uh, it said that angel came, and he, he, he punched Peter. It didn't say punch, but he, he, he uh, struck Peter. So I want to say punch. I want to say kick. Uh, he, he was like, dude, get up. You see, it's funny that the message series that we're in is speed. I think there's a sense of urgency that God wants us to wake up. God wants us to wake up. That the angel, the spirit of the Lord is coming and striking us and say, hey, get up. And I love what the angel tells Peter. It says this in your notes. In Acts 12, 8, it says this. Then the angel told him, get dressed, put on your sandals. And he did. Now put on your coat and follow me. The angel ordered. The angel said, get up. There's a sense of urgency. But you know what I notice about this scripture, about this passage? Is the angel not once mentioned the jail cell or the prison that Peter was in. He not once acknowledged the jail cell that he was in. He not once acknowledged the surroundings of Peter. He said, get up, put on your sandals, your coat, and follow me. You see, when we start to acknowledge the prison, when we start to acknowledge the surroundings, when we start to acknowledge the lack in our lives, when we start to acknowledge the negativity in our lives, when we start to acknowledge and look back at our past and how things used to be, oh, Egypt was so good, there was more food there, we were treated like kings there. When we start to acknowledge the things around us and the things behind us, we lose focus of the promise. We lose focus of what's our purpose. Jesus is our promise. Keep your focus on him. Don't acknowledge the jail cell. We're going to go through trials and tribulations. We're going to go through some hard times. Don't acknowledge the negativity. Keep your focus. Say, God, I'm going to get up and I'm going to try again. God, I'm going to get up and I'm going to try again. I'm going to focus on you and not focus on what's going on here. And you watch God accelerate your life, accelerate you to new blessings, accelerate you to new levels. Amen? Amen. 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 Number three, home stretch. Great struggles are followed by greater blessings. New Hope, your blessing is right around the corner. Your blessing is right around the corner. I don't know who that's for. I don't know who that's for. Your blessing is right around that corner. Don't give up. Don't give in. Continue to do what's good. Great struggles are followed by greater blessings. It's in due season. Due season is near. 
God is about to accelerate you, New Hope. And we talked about God won't um, allow you to go through things that you can't handle. He's like a personal trainer who knows your body type, knows your, your, uh, uh, your weight, knows uh, your intensity level of, of training. He knows everything about your ins and outs of your body and your health. He's not going to make you do a workout that's going to kill you. He's going to make a workout that's going to going to make you do a workout that's going to better you and strengthen you. He knows your capacity of what you can handle. God is the same way. He knows what you can handle. But he's not going to baby you. He's going to put you through some things to strengthen you. He's going to put you through some things to make you stronger, to make you better. So understand that these struggles that we go through, these hard times, these hardships, there's a reason for it. God does nothing in vain. Know that God is strategic. God is strategic about his plan. Nothing he does is in vain. So be encouraged by that. This word today is just an encouraging word for somebody out there. This is the good part of the sermon where everybody claps and says hallelujah. Right? Right? Hallelujah. Now, I want to talk about a story really quick of, of, of in, in the Bible of the 12 spies, of the 12 scouts. Moses, they, right, they're about to cross into the promised land. And Moses says, hey, we got to send some spies, some scouts out. He says, go and bring me back what you see. Bring back a report of what you see. Part of the 12 spies is Joshua and Caleb. Right, they go and what do they see? It says that they go into the land and they see, they see milk and honey flowing. And, but they see these giants walking around. These giants walking around like an like a NBA all-star team. Just walking around there, hanging out. This is where the perspective comes into play. Don't grow weary in doing good. You see, Joshua and Caleb, they never focused on the surroundings. They never focused on what happened to them in the wilderness. They never focused on the struggle in front of them, these giants that they had to go up against. They never focused on that. They focused on the promised land. And they knew that this great struggle comes with a great blessing. This great struggle to get past this is going to come with a greater blessing. But they never took, fo- they never took their focus off the promise. Because everybody else came back with a negative report. They said, Moses, we can't do it. They got an NBA all-star team. I think I've seen the Greek freak. He's over there. He's going he's to kill all of us. Right? And so, so Moses is like, well, you guys are, you guys are you're so negative, man. These are negative. Uh, but, but Joshua and Caleb, they said, Moses, bro, we got this. We got this. And Moses is like, oh, really? Well, well tell me what you see. He said, dude, you're not going to believe this. Forget, forget the giants. For, forget all that. Check this out. There were, there were fruits that was huge. And, and it says here in your notes, in number, number 12, uh, 13, 23, it says this. They cut down a branch with a single cluster of grapes so large that it took two of them to carry it on a pole between them. A cluster of grapes, a little, a little branch of grapes, right? This little, this little cluster of grapes. It took two grown men with a pole to carry it. Now, I can send my son to the store, and he can grab some grapes and walk out. But imagine me and Pastor Terry walking with this cluster of grapes like, like dude, this is a blessing that we've been waiting for. This is, this is what I'm talking about, Moses. This is what we've been looking for right here. A land of milk and honey. A land of greater blessings. But you know that these struggles come with a greater blessing. So stop praying, God, remove the cross. But God, strengthen my back to carry it. Because I know there's a greater blessing. These great struggles come with great blessings. That, that's, that's the word for today. So don't lose focus of the promise. Because what their outlook and their positive uh, outlook and their perspective of the situation, not focusing on what's going on, not focusing on what happened, not focusing on the struggle, what their positive outlook did for them is found in the story in Numbers 14.30. It says this, God is speaking. It says, you will not enter and occupy the land I swore to give you. The only exceptions will be Caleb and Joshua. Caleb and Joshua. Why? Because they never lost focus of the promise. They didn't care what they needed to go through. They didn't care about the progress. They knew that the things that happened to them was for them. And they knew that this great struggle comes with a greater blessing. And they told Moses, Moses, you've seen what God did for us in the wilderness. We should have died in the wilderness, but God got us through. We walked 40 days without blisters on our feet, Moses. What's some little giants going to do to us? We got this. Right, it's the word of encouragement, the word of understanding that we serve a big God. He has big blessings in your life. Just because you encounter a big struggle does not mean it comes with a bigger blessing. It definitely comes with a bigger blessing. I'm sorry. 
But God wants us to understand that, and God wants us to be encouraged. Don't give up. Don't give in. Amen? 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 The things don't happen to you. They happen for you. Keep your focus on the promise and not the progress, and these great struggles are followed by greater blessings. And I want to end with this story. Uh, it's a personal story. I'm going to end with this. Uh, I have a dog. I'm going to show you a picture of my dog. And the camera's going to zoom in so you can see. I'm sorry I don't have a visual up on the screen. Here we go. There it is. Bring it in. 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 Yes. Right? First thing you think. Aw. My dog. His name is Kolu. Um, amazing dog. My best friend, man. Uh, I've had him for a very long time. Uh, matter of fact, my wife and I, we were just dating when I first got him. Um, so I've had him for a very long time. And he was like my best friend. I, I did everything with him. I drove uh, to, to the store with him. He would hang out the passenger window. We did everything together. This was like my best friend in the world. I loved him. And, and two years ago, uh, my wife and I, we, we got engaged and we got married. And it was in the month of November. And I remember um, we got married. Our wedding day came. Amazing. We had so much fun. We had a blast. We celebrated the night. Um, it was an amazing time with our friends and family. And then we go home. We pick up some McDonald's on the way home because you never eat at a wedding, right? So, so we, uh, we're so busy with saying hellos and, and, and greeting meets. Uh, but, but we never got to eat. So we went, got some food. We go home. We're about to eat. We're about to grow up. And we're just talking about how awesome the wedding was. Then I get a phone call. Um, see, um, prior to moving in, we moved in the night of the wedding. Um, uh, my, I was living with my mom and dad. Uh, so they had my dog. But the night of the wedding, we decided to move into our place. So we moved there, and we, we, got, we got situated, and we were about to eat. And I remember my mom called me, and she said, hey, Austin. She was crying on the phone. I said, what's going on, mom? And she said, uh, Kolu's dead. I said, what? I, no, 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 no. I, I said, I think, I think you, you're, I understand her. I said, mom, what did you say? She said, your dog died. And I, I, was, I, was, I was like, what? On my wedding day? I said, What? And I started to cry, and then my wife and I, we changed clothes, and we, we fly over to my mom's house, and sure enough, my dog was laying there. He was sick, but because we were so busy with the wedding and planning and everything, I didn't notice that he was sick. He wasn't eating a lot. Uh, but he ended up dying uh, in our laundry room, and he was just laying there, and um, we got him cremated. And, but I remember when I shared this with uh, fam family and friends, the first thing they asked me was, hey, Oz, um, why would God do this to you? I said, what do you mean? Is it... Your wedding day is supposed to be like the happiest day of your life. Why would God take your dog on your happiest day? At the time, I didn't have an answer. I, I said, I, I, I don't know. I was just so hurt, and I was like, man, I lost my best friend. But they would ask me, like, well, this, this God that you serve, this God that you, you seek, why would he do this to you? If he's a good God, why would he put you through this? And then God brought me to that scripture in John 13. He said, uh, you don't understand what I'm doing right now, but someday you will. Just trust me. Keep your focus on the promise, not the progress, not what's going on around you. He said, this struggle is going to come with a greater blessing. And I shared that with my family and my friend, and they said, okay, Os, well, you know, we just hope everything works out. Fast forward a year later, about a year and a month, uh, it's in December, it's Christmas, um, my wife, she loves to give me gifts in scavenger hunt type ways. So I get a bunch of notes all over the house. I'm walking from the fridge to the living room to the bedroom. I'm going in the oven. I'm going in the microwave. She's got notes everywhere. And they're like, oh, go here. Okay. I'm going. I'm like, man, where's the gift? I just want the gift. But she's sending me all around the house. And then finally, one of the last notes, it says, go to your best friend's photo. And I said, oh, okay. So I go to, I go to my dog's photo. I go to Cola's photo. And I find... I find this note. So I'm like, oh, what's this? She says, just read it. Read it out loud. So I read it. I says, um, what up, my master? It's my dog talking to me. It's Kolu. And he says, man, I really, really miss you. He says, I can't wait to see you again. And he says, uh, anyways, uh, mommy, my wife, mommy wanted me to tell you something. And it says, flip over. So I flip it over and it says, uh, you are a great master. But you're going to be an even greater dad. You see, at the time when I lost my best friend, when I lost my dog, I questioned, God, why would this happen to me? Everything was going so good. But see, God, he knew that I was going to receive a bigger and greater blessing that I didn't know about. He knew that I was going to receive something that I didn't, I had no idea. I didn't know that the struggle that I was going through, 
fighting the pain of losing my best friend. God knew, hey, there's going to be someone else that you're going to be investing your time, your money, and all your love in. Let me just take Kolu home and you enjoy this blessing instead. You see, the struggle that I went through of questioning God, but he told me, hey, this is not happening to you. This is happening for you. I'm strengthening you. Right? Remember all those times you had to wake up and go feed your dog at certain times in the night? Those times you had to take your dog out to go poop? Something's coming where you're going to have to do a lot more than that. And he said, he, said, he, he, he said, keep your focus on me. Trust in me. I've got, I've got a greater blessing in store. My son, his name is Axe. We named him after the book of Acts. My favorite scripture is Acts 14, 22, and it says this, that Paul and Barnabas strengthened the believers, encouraging them that we must go through hardships in order to enter the kingdom of God. There's going to be times that's tough. There's going to be times where you want to throw in a towel, but know that there's hope out there. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.